So very recently I brought a Creality K1 scene and I am really happy with the speed. It is super speedy and the quality of those prints. This is by far one of the best 3D printers I ever brought. But as impressive as the K1 is, it does have one fatal flaw and that it does not have a heated chamber. And unfortunately, Creality do not give you a solution for that. The printed heat chamber is only available on the K2 series and it is built in. But it is really disappointing that they didn't put it in the K1s, nor do they give you an add-on to upgrade it. So instead, we're going to make our own for cheaper and probably way better. So let's get into it. I came across this design on Colts 3D and he was very nice to leave the materials in the description. Then I just sliced it in quality print, just a simple box design. For this I'm going to be using quality HP ASA and it is super tough but more importantly heat resistant which is what we want. The heated chamber cover is now all done and printed. I've just ordered the parts on AliExpress. I mean, AliExpress is just one, they're cheap. Two, they have everything. And three, I'm not in that much of a rush, if I'm being honest. So those parts should come in about two weeks time. All the links will be down in the description below if you want to print this along with the materials as well. So I'll see you in about two weeks time. Our parts from AliExpress have arrived and I'm gonna give you a general rundown of how it all fits inside here. So starting off, we have this PSU. This is 24 volts, 400 watt, 16 amp PSU in a blue aluminium case which is really nice and protective. This is our heating element this is also 24 volts 200 watt and it's going to go in the bottom here I'm mounted on these two pegs here and the wires are going to go up into this little area like that. This is our 90 degree angled fan also 24 volts and that's going to go up the top here presses in and the wire comes over into that little air, same area again and then of course we have our little switch this is rated for 16 amp as well and obviously that just goes in the top right here then obviously we have our TX60 plug obviously that goes in the top as well next to the button it presses in like that we have our thermostat along with a temperature probe on the other end and that fits into the cover and it just literally presses in just like that and it should all somehow compact in and you should get something like that. The wiring took us a little while to figure out and there is a diagram provided by the person who made this, but ultimately we kind of did our own thing and we are using standard three core cable stripped out of the sleeving 
and it was a very very tight fit in that little box area where all the connections go oh uh, oh that's actually got some good airflow oh the little button lights up as well uh, that's set oh it's clicked on so that's our temperature of the thermometer and that's our set temperature yeah that's getting warm really quick this metal tinfoil tape in it just to help it be a little bit more heat resistant so it ate too much on the actual case itself oh it's going up 40 When it reaches 50, it should turn off. Oh, there you go, it just clicked. Uh, it's just clicked back on. So that, that actually works out pretty well. I'm actually quite happy with that. It's actually quite quiet, so uh, I don't think we'll actually be able to hear it once it's in the 3D printer in the enclosure. The heater fits at the back left hand side and I was very lazy and just decided to just to drill a hole out the back to root the wires. I mean, you can do it a better way, make it look more professional. <music> I am really, really glad that I actually upgraded the K1C to that heater. I have been printing a lot of ASA stuff out on it. And the heater is honestly life changing. It has improved the printer so much. So if you want to create your own heater, link will be in the description down below. I'll catch you guys later in another video.